You're listening to Alternative Future Radio, home of the weird, resting place of the paranormal. We'll take you to the furthest reaches of the galaxy and beyond. Strange phenomena, aliens, psychics, cryptozoology, conspiracy, holistic health, and UFOs. Alternative Future Radio, where spooky just got weird. Good morning once again to the world. From us, the out there hour, bringing glory up unto thee. The Out There Hour on Alternative Future Radio. The Out There Hour with Basil and Mark. www.alternativefutureradio.com Good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon. And welcome to the Middle East. Africa. Trinidad and Tobago. Congo. South Sandwich Islands. Czech Republic. Ooh, I will do later. <laughs> Take my wife, please. I'm here all week. And uh, hello to our friends on Facebook, YouTube, and iTunes. Comment. Send us messages. We'll take whatever you've got, except for spam and hack attacks. <laughs> we don't even want to go there. We'll talk about that on After Hours. We will. It's been serious. Mm. We've had a bit of a week. We're pressed for time. We're going to talk to a, a gentleman in South Africa. Yes. Uh, named Zingdad. Zingdad, yes. Uh, I must admit, the name does conjure up a certain impression. It does, and it's probably a wrong impression. I think so, yeah. I think people are going to be surprised by Zingdad. They're going to be very surprised by a very articulate, very intelligent man. Yeah, he seems to know his beans. And uh, some interesting uh, stuff on philosophies and uh, in the nature of intuition. Yeah. And what yeah. that might be. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't expect that from a man called Zingdad, did you? No, you didn't. Yeah, uh, yeah very, very good. Uh, he's an author of the uh, book. The Ascension Papers? Um, under the name Zingdad uh, also. Yeah. Uh, you can check out Zingdad.com and uh, his books on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble and all You're going all to be in for nice quite places. a treat. It's not what you're expecting. Yeah, yeah. I must admit, uh, I, I myself heard the name and thought... Yeah, this that's going to be weird. Yeah, you think it's going to be a bit loopy and all that yeah. kind of thing. Uh, it it's isn't. actually fairly grounded. Very grounded, indeed. Yeah, but fascinating, too. Yes. Shall we do the thing? Let's do it. Let's do it. Have you always been interested in the esoteric world? Perhaps you'd like to learn more about ufology, lost civilizations, cryptozoology, or even conspiracy theories. We have diploma courses in all these subjects and more. So, if you want to become an expert or just have a great time learning about exopolitics, false flag terrorism, or the paranormal, then the Esoteric Academy is the place for you. EsotericAcademy.com, where ideas and learning meet. Okay, now we are going live over to South Africa to a forest area outside Neisner. I I think I've <laughs> Neisner, got that. I yes. think I've got that right to speak to Zingdad. Hello and good morning to both of us for once. Hello Mark, lovely to be chatting to you. Thank you for having me on the show. Good morning to you. Are you on the same time zone as us? This is a real novelty for us. It, it's it's strange for me too to be talking to somebody who's vaguely at the same part of the day as I'm. I'm uh, just an hour later than you. Ah. Uh, excellent, excellent. You, you've had an extra hour in bed then, Zingad, more than we've had. <laughs> That's what I did, yes. <laughs> yeah, we got up early for your convenience. It's okay, we don't mind. <laughs> Too kind. <laughs> so, right, where do we start? Um, let's start with your, your website. I looked at your uh, your website and there's so much information on there, my brain blue screened. Uh, can you <laughs> can you basically start right at the very beginning? Um, because I've listened to other interviews with you and there was a great assumption by some of the interviewers, certainly, that people knew various terms and various mm. things that you were talking about already. And I'd rather start right at the beginning because we, we aim for a, a semi-mainstream audience, not to, uh, not to yeah, you know, we don't pigeonhole we them don't, too much. We don't assume anybody has yeah. any prior knowledge. So we like to start at, at the beginning. So wh where's the best place to start? Oh, gosh. All right. Um, so, so really, um, my, my journey is, 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 is a kind of a spiritual one. It's, um, it's about questing after the answers to, to, to the things that, that bugged me. Um, I found within myself, uh, um, I suppose as, as many people do, 
some some kind of uh, doubts and questions and why is my life the way it is why is the world the way it is why do things um why do th- why do i get angry unreasonably at times these kind of um emotional spiritual psychological kind of questions mm. And so um, I, I, I quested after those, and I wasn't happy with the answers I was finding in, in, in religion or in philosophy or, or, or the, you know, these normal avenues. I just wasn't happy with it. Yeah. And um, so I decided that the only place I was going to find eventually, I, that I was going to find answers that would satisfy me were within myself. And um, I developed over many, many years a mechanism of, of connecting with, with my own spirit guide. Um, and and I realized that this sounds like a completely bizarre thing to do. Uh, if you haven't done it yourself, well, maybe I'm just deluding myself. And I'm completely open to the fact that, that this is one grand self-delusion. Mm-hmm. But I connected with an intelligence, with an answer within myself, which was providing me with, with, with answers to the questions that I had. And um, initially, I had profound doubts about this. But I started very tentatively sharing some of the information that I was obtaining in this way online. Um, I joined some online forums. And uh, when you join a forum online, you've got to come up with a snappy, clever pseudonym with something to call yourself. Mm-hmm. Now, I have a little Dashunt who I'm particularly attached to called Zing. So I called myself Zing's dad, Zing dad. And, and <laughs> so it was just, just a silly spur of the moment whim thing to call myself. Um, and I, I started posting the material that I had like that. And I was expecting a whole lot of finger pointing. Oi, you crazy guy, go away, you're mad. Yeah. And instead, what I got was some really good responses. People saying, well, hey, wait a minute, this, this is interesting. I like this. <clears throat> and then I connected with, um, as I was engaging in this pursuit of who am I, what is it all about? I started to scratch out memories that were not mine, past life recollections snippets of, of, of events that made sense, that, made, that helped me to make sense of my own, my own discomfort, my own confusion, my own pain. Places where I had come to deep-seated decisions which were still reverberating through my life. And one of these lifetimes, I found a, um, a very caring, grandfatherly kind of figure who had helped me to make sense of a lot of things many lifetimes ago. And so... I decided in the same wacky way to reach out and find this being and ask him questions about who is he and, 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 and how can he help me to make sense of, of my stuff. And um, <clears throat> this being uh, gave me some very startling information. He's, he, he, uh, uh, he's called Adamu and uh, he let me know that he was a part of the Pleiadian um, soul complex. Now, all you, of this you're going to have to just, explain that one. Well, okay, good. So, so uh, they're out in the Pleiades, apparently. There, there, there's uh, like a whole civilization living there, um, uh, kind of like like what we are on Earth, except they're way more advanced technologically, and and they're spacefaring beings, and they and, and he claims that they um, that they have been watching over and observing, and they're very very um, connected with what's going on here on planet Earth. And uh, so this is what he, he, he claims. And um, he says that there's been uh, interactions with other spacefaring beings. And there's a whole, a whole oeuvre of story about, about how humans got onto planet Earth. And <laughs> it's, 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 it gets very complex and very convoluted. And I probably don't want to derail the whole interview with, with, with this little snippet of story. But the point is that, that they, as a civilization... Um, uh, at at some point they they all ascend into unity consciousness they they spiritually all become one one great magnificent spiritual being but now that's oh gosh it gets very complex but that's at a at a higher dimensional level and 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 uh, and at this level where they attain oneness they're completely outside of time. So okay. inside of time, that you can ex- they can experience themselves as incarnated beings and as separate, the way we do. Outside of time, in, at an- another higher dimensional level, they experience themselves as one great unified consciousness. So just and, to just to get my head around that, th- these are physical beings, creatures in in the Pleiades who are physical and they they walk and talk, but they also have an ability to 
to be outside their bodies. Did I get that right? Am I understanding you? It's a, it's kind of like it's a matter of perspective, right? Uh, um, from from one perspective, separation; from another perspective, unity. And mm. and um, the proposal is 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 that there is a a um, a general trend towards spiritual evolution, and we here on Earth are no different from what they are. It's just that we 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 f- we are holding the perspective of complete separation. So you and I don't know that that at some level we are connected to the great the great eternal oneness of all. You and I don't know that. So I don't know your thoughts. Um, we mm-hmm. don't know that we are on some level connected. But but the fact that we don't know it is a perspective that we're holding. It's a choice that we have made to experience ourselves like this. Mm-hmm. This is the contention. And when when these things started arriving for me, they're very wild and very out there and very interesting. I mean, so sure. But all the objections arrived. And so as these objections arrived, I decided now I need to sit down and I need to ask these questions in a kind of a, um, a, 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 a formulated way that I can really get through my objections and see if this thing will all fall apart um, uh, in, in, in the face of the questions that I have about this. Because if this is true, why is the world like it is? If we are one with the oneness and if we are creating our reality, why is it such a stuff up? Why are we hurting ourselves? Why is there war? Why is there crime? Why is there abuse? All these questions. Mm-hmm. These and many, many more. And so I sat down and, and, um, and I started addressing these questions um, uh, to, to, to the beings that I found connection with, my own higher self, my spirit guy as being a Dhammu. Can I ask and just what, how, how you would go about connecting to... Uh to Ad- Adamu, I mean, obviously, you, you mentioned talking and connecting, but you didn't really say how. How did it happen the first time? Um, yeah. Yes. It's a, a, there's, a, there's a very simple answer, but the point is it took me, it took me um, 16 years to, to come to just really trust and open myself to it. And the simple answer is that um, we all have the little voice inside, the, the, that little intuitive voice that says, oh, don't get into the lift now. That's right. Uh, whatever and and if you listen to the voice then the lift gets stuck on the third floor and you go oh my god i knew that mm. I, I, I had a little voice that said and that's why i'm okay so we all have that now what is that and where does that come from uh, and and are we going to just wait for the little voice to speak to us now what i did was i engaged in a process of of very acutely sensitively actively choosing to listen to that little voice and it took me as I say, it took me years to get over my own, my own doubts and my own fears to really just be listening. Mm. And instead of then waiting for the little voice to speak, to start interrogating the little voice, to say, but who are you? What are you? Why are you? And, and, and where are you? And, you know, what does this all mean? And, 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 and essentially, what I understand, what, what I come to learn is that the little voice is, is, the aspect of self, it's you that you are when you are not lost and confused here in this game called incarnation. Zing Dad, you're not a- anybody, yeah. anybody who, who, who isn't on board with this, um, I- I- who isn't familiar with this, the very first thing they're going to say, so I have to ask the question, is they're going to say you, you might be schizophrenic. Uh, have, you, have you accepted that as a possibility? Oh, sure. There are there are all kinds of possibilities. I'm, I might be schizophrenic. I'm I'm very well. Might be completely deluded. I might be completely confused. All of that stuff. Sure, yeah. sure, fine. It's just it's, you know, the tradition is that if voices talk to you, usually, usually anyway, people would be badged as schizophrenic. Now, okay, but I'm not talking about having voices speak to me. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't have voices in my head. Right. Any more than you have a voice in your head. When, when, when you just get a knowing, oh, don't go there now, do this. Yes. And it's an unreasonable knowing. There isn't, there isn't empirical evidence as to why this is not a good idea or something. Mm, more of an there inclination. Just a, a just, a, just a something, a knowing. Now, we call it the little voice, but it isn't, of course, a voice. It doesn't ah. speak in words. It speaks in, in just a, a, an intuition, a knowing. Right, and and so so I I I stick with the with the euphemistic expression of a voice of a speaking, uh, but it isn't that. It's just knowing. Yeah. Um, but now what I have done is is I've said, well, okay, if there is knowing, what else does it know? And I've sought after that knowing. 
And in asking the questions, I hold the question, uh, I, again, euphemistically, I hold it in my heart. I hold the question in the place of knowing, and the answer comes back. And then what I do is I um, translate that knowing, because it arrives as a full, whole, and complete thought. It's a, it's a whole idea, which isn't in words. And then I start to write that down. And I started to do that, and a little while later, the knowing after it had explained to me all kinds of amazing things and after it put to put to rest my questions in ways that literally just astounded me um because i didn't have these ideas in my head it came just blew me away and it was beautiful and it was simple and it was coherent and it hung together and at some point the knowing arrived now i'm actually writing a book so i continued on that journey a little bit later and then now the book is ready now publish mm -hmm. um and so i i i follow where it leads and i um, i'm i'm on this amazing journey i'm just seeing where it goes and and it's taking me to some really really beautiful places not just um not just answering my questions but but helping me to understand myself and to understand life in a way that brings me profound peace in a way that 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 allows me to release the fears the pain the anxiety um it's just it's just brought me uh, uh, amazing stuff in my life and so i wrote the book and people read the book and they come back to me and they go oh my goodness this is amazing this is true this is wonderful now i didn't, i'm not saying that it's that it's any kind of ultimate truth. And I'm not saying anybody should believe what I'm saying. It's simply what I've got. And mm. I'm sharing it with love. That if anybody else is interested, well, there it is. Check it out for yourself. See if it's valuable to you. Um, and, and implicit to the material is the understanding that, that there is no one great truth that you have to believe. There, 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 isn't, there, there isn't stuff like that. It's very, very simple, actually. And what it is, is more along the lines of what you hold to be true within yourself at the deepest level, not the surface ideas, at the deepest level, what you believe you are is what you will see reflected back at you by life. You create your experiences by your most deeply held choices. So if you don't like your experiences, it's really futile to be rushing around and trying to make the world different than what it is, because the world will simply reflect you back at you. I've what often, there is, I've is often wondered uh, about yes, sir, this, uh, uh, Zingdad, uh, about creating your own reality. Yeah, I hear a lot of people talking about that these days. And uh, I do have some belief in it, that you get back what you give out to, mm. to a fair extent. But I'm just, how is it that we can't seem to imagine ourselves as being millionaires and becoming... Yeah, he mentioned that. I mean, so, if we are creating our reality, why is it so why, why crap? Can't, why can't we create a, a really good... <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely can, but 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 really, it's a process of coming to understand yourself. Because ultimately, okay, let's 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 take a step back. My contention is that you create your reality with your your deepest. With the, it's like the sponsoring thought, the belief behind the belief. Now, if you say, okay, I want to be a millionaire, what is what is really underlying this? Is it? Uh, f your your fears and your insecurities about not having enough mm. is it your desire to have more than anybody else what's really 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 going on with you where is it really coming from and what do you really want and so it's a it's a journey it's not as simple as um i get what i'm thinking or i get what i'm mm. fantasizing mm. because you don't get what you want you get what you are reflected back at you mm -hmm. And if you want to manipulate others around you so that they have less than you, so that you have more than them, so that you feel better than them, so that you're superior, well, you know, there's a whole lot of good luck that you need because, because some of that's going to sting. Um, so it's, it's, it's really, it's a journey into self. And the journey is about discovering what it is that you really want. What truly brings you joy? What makes your heart sing? And, and what, is, what is the gift that you have to give? Because we all do. We all want the same stuff. We want to be loved. We want to feel connection and belonging. We want to have something, a, a, a thing that we do that's, that's, that's beautiful, that's magnificent, that others value us for. And we want life to, to respond positively, to say, hey, you're fantastic. What you're doing is great. We love you. We all want these things. 
But to the degree that we get locked up in our fears about we can't have them or it's wrong or it's not going to be okay or I, I won't be loved or to the degree that we get locked up in the fear is the degree to which we try and and the, the ego self, the part of self that doesn't know that it's connected, tries to make stuff better, tries to accumulate wealth, tries to, I uh, don't know, get insurance policies so that when stuff goes wrong, I'll still be okay. These kind of things. Mm. So I'm not proposing a simple one step, decide what you want and you'll attract it to yourself. I'm proposing that, there, that, that, that this calls for some, some deep interrogation. Who am I really? Why am I really here? What do I really want? And, mm. and then what are, what are the things deep within myself that are at odds with this? Where, are, where am I locked and blocked in fear and, in, and, and, and anger and negativity? And how can I release that? And as you release that, so you align more and more of your own energy, more and more of your thoughts, your ideas, what you say, what you do, what you think, become aligned with this, with the, with the, this deeper purpose. And as you align with that, as more of your energy flows in that direction, so more of it is reflected back at you by the life around you. And you get more and more of what you really want. And that's what it is. Hmm. So o opening yourself to your intuition, uh, Zingda, is quite interesting because I am a great believer in following uh, not what your head tells you, but what what your intuition. Your, what your heart tells you, what you mm. feel is the right thing. Yeah, I, I would go with that. And although it doesn't, it, it can be difficult and things mm. go wrong, it's usually the right decision. Yeah. That's the funny thing yeah. about it. But usually your first impression is usually my contention correct. Is that if, if, so, my sorry. contention is, is that if you are truly following your heart, yes. truly, yes. That, that it never goes wrong, um, it's not always easy. Don't get mm. me wrong. It's not always, it's not about doing being the fun thing always it's not it's not always easy sometimes very often following your heart requires of you to do things that are really really difficult now for example particularly when when your when your heart which is your connection i'm contending to your higher self to your spirit self when your heart is is not agreeing with your head which is your ego self the part of you that doesn't know that can only rely on on empirical evidence when these two things are in conflict when the head says oh but i won't be safe if I just do this thing, if I just follow my passion, if I just throw caution to the wind and do what's right for me to do, if I take this leap of, of faith, I won't be okay. Then, th then we have to decide, who am I really? Am I, am I the, the, the heart-connected being or am I the ego-following being? And if you truly follow your heart, you are connecting yourself with the aspect of self that knows exactly what's going on, that knows exactly why it's here. That has that 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 chose to incarnate in this lifetime, the very very clear purpose, and you're aligned with that purpose. And I'm saying things are not always easy. Things are not always nice in the short term. Sometimes there's hard stuff to be done. Sometimes there's growing up to be done, backbone to be gained. These things are, can be hard. Um, but if you stick with it, it always turns out to the greatest good for you, for 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 all those around you. You, you, you behave in a way that's not about hurting and manipulating, that doesn't bring that kind of feedback back, where life doesn't slap you back for it, because you're moving into greater alignment if you're following your heart. That's my contention. And you can really develop your intuition if you really listen to it. Um, is, mm. is that what you're saying? I would say it's, it's, like, it's like any skill, like any muscle. Mm. If you if uh, if you disregard it, disrespect it, shut it down, call it nonsense, aren't interested in it, it you 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 uh, it becomes very quiet. You silence it. If you decide to actively engage with it, if you decide to listen, to 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 be conscious, if when your intuition speaks to you, you 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 follow that, you you go with it, then you're you're exercising that muscle. It it starts to speak a little louder. If you, for example, um, were to meditate and to spend time in conscious listening, well, then you're stretching that muscle a little bit. So it's a matter of choice. What are you listening to? What are you identifying yourself with? What are you aligning yourself with? If it's with, with your, your, your inner self, if it's with your knowing, with your heart, well, you're going to get better at it. Zingda, 
in uh, in a past incarnation of my life, not in the uh, metaphysical sense, but a while ago, um, I, I spent some time as a therapist, and I have to say that what what you're saying sounds like a, another version of events for what I would describe as the fact that I think that most people aren't living the life that they desire to live uh, to put it in very yeah. simple blunt terms most people seem to be living a lie yes yes exactly um and and the lie comes from from the fact that they are aligning themselves with with their fears mm. um not with what they love they're not following their their passion they're not they're they're they're, they're not they're not even interrogating what is it that I really want to be doing? You ask somebody this question. Okay, so you could do anything. If you, if you had all the resources that you needed, if, if somebody just gave you a blank check and your bills were paid, what would you be doing? And the blank stare that comes back at you, I don't know. I don't know. If I haven't really thought of that. Yep. So <clears throat> we don't even know what we want to be doing, let alone, we, let alone being on the path to making sure that we're doing that. We yep. don't even know who we really are. You ask somebody, you know, you, you, you meet somebody socially, the, the, the stereotypical question is, so what do you do? In other words, what, are, what is your ego attached to at this moment? Yeah. It's not who are you really or what are you passionate about? Because it's, that's too intrusive a question because we don't know. And I, surely we should know these basic things about ourselves. What are my passions? What do I really want to be doing? And how am I getting myself closer to that? But we don't because we have fear about that. Because, because great daddy society tells us that you, know, you, you exist to, to do a job so that you can um, be um, uh, gainfully employed, so that you can mm. be supporting your family, so you can be raising children, so that they can become equally good drones for society. Yeah. I think it's something I've noticed that the whole... Uh institution of marriage seems to have actually have uh, it seems to be, have died away it's, 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 mm. it's a long gone idea because people develop from their 20s to their yeah. 30s to their 40s so I think that's one of the great systems that I've noticed lately yeah. seems to have because people don't stay the same they don't so therefore it's kind of it, a, a redundant yeah, idea yeah well, it's the same thing as as um, you know, you're 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 oh gosh, you're 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 a nipper at school. You're you're you haven't even decided. Yeah. You haven't even decided which girl you like, and people are already saying, "So, what are you going to be when you grow up?" In yeah. other words, what are you, you must now attach yourself to to an identity of mm. a thing that you're going to do, and you've got to stick to it. You don't have an idea who you are, but you must make a choice now that you must stick to for the rest of your life. And there's an idea that, that, that we must do that, that we must have a career that we must stick to, which is completely patent nonsense. We, yeah. are, we are constantly evolving, changing, growing beings. Surely there isn't a doing that I can attach myself to and stay attached to. And yeah, I would contend that you're right. The same thing, the same thing with marriage. Now, look, I mean, it's difficult. So society wants to protect itself. We want to provide a stable environment for children to grow up in. And so there are, there are underlying good reasons for all of this stuff. Mm. But I would say if, if, you, if you want to wake up, if you want to come to the point of realizing that, that this is a dream and I'm a dreamer, and mm. I can wake up and become, become a, a, a conscious dreamer, I can begin to, to choose how the dream unfolds. Well, then you've got to stop following the programming. You've got to start writing your own script. Mm -hmm. Seems that and that's the shape of society. Going back to what you were saying before, uh, what people actually want, uh, as you say, most people don't know. If they won the lottery, therefore they, they met all their financial obligations, they had a place to stay, and they were secure. And Most people, if you ask them on the street, before they win the lottery, what they want, most of them want some degree of security because they're generally insecure mm, and they want one. they want a house and yep. food and, and clothes. But once they've actually got all that, I would love to hear the answers from lottery millionaires, what, what they want to do next. I, I wonder if that's why a lot of them just blow the cash. It's, and, it's usually pre-programmed ideas about what you What they do. think they should yeah. be expected to want <laughs> kind of thing. Like, yeah, I'm going to go on a cruise. I'm, I'm going, going to, to buy, buy, open buy, a restaurant yeah. or something. <laughs> it's, I wonder how many people really do have a clue what they want and, and what kind of things, if you have any experience of this thing, that, what kind of things do people want? What kind of answers are you getting? 
I think it, it, it's, it's very important that one gets very clear about the question um, mm. about what I want. Because, um, yeah, to, to use your example of the lottery, winning the lottery is probably one of the, the worst things that can happen to people. Mm. Um, you know, if you ask somebody, what do you want? They make, they'll normally give you an answer in terms of, of, of cash. Uh, you know, I want a million bucks is what I want. Um, but, but they actually don't want the million bucks because, because a pile of cash you, is, is, is meaningless. Yeah. What they want is the fact that it will, as you say, it will buy them security. It will buy them okay. It will, it will make them feel powerful. They'll have the toys that will give them sex appeal. It will have the, the, it's this kind of stuff. So it's not actually the money. It's what the money might bring them. Mm. So if you're asking the question, what do you really want? Um, uh, there, there is. I spoke earlier about the um, about the sponsoring thought. It's very important to get beyond surface wants to the underlying the underlying want, and to keep working and going deeper and deeper and deeper to finding what it is that you truly, truly want. Because there is there is a a, a kind of a a rightness, a purpose. Uh, I am doing what I'm meant to be doing. I am living my best, most abundant life. I, I, I am joyful. I am giving my greatest gift. I'm aligned. I'm, there, is, there is that kind of a, that's, that's, where, that's where you're going. And then there is the scenery along that journey. So there's the stuff that happens to you when, when you are in that kind of right relationship with yourself. When you're in the flow, when you're doing what you're meant to be doing, there is the scenery. So people often confuse the, the want with the scenery. So for example, if I want to feel loved, safe, secure, then some of the scenery with loved, safe, and secure is, is um, uh, I don't know, a comfortable home. Where, where Owning your own home where you don't have debt because debt makes us feel insecure. Yeah. Um, a, a, a beautiful environment because we, because we love beautiful environment it, it's somewhere in nature because we respond to that. Um, um, my family gathered around me. Everybody's taken care of. So that's the scenery of somebody who is loved, safe, and secure. But we confuse the scenery for the deepest want. Mm. Now, if you find the, 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 your heart call, if you find the thing that your, your soul is calling you to, then you, 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 you get unconfused. Then you realize, well, that's what I'm going towards. And then the scenery can happen. But you don't attach to the scenery. I don't have to have a house in the country to be okay. Because maybe loved, safe, and secure takes me through a house in the country into some other experience of life where, where, where I feel even more loved, safe, and secure. Maybe when I'm loved, safe, and secure, I don't need to hold on to that. Maybe then it's it's time for me to move into giving my great gift or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. um, the point I'm really trying to get to is that what we truly want is not outside of ourselves. Mm -hmm. when, we, when we have really worked with it, when we've stayed the journey, what we truly want is not stuff. It's not toys. It's not, it's not um, events and experiences. It's, it's actually within ourselves. It's, it's, it's a feeling. It's a deep-seated rightness it's an okayness it's connection it's loving it's home it's belonging it's that's that's the kind of stuff that we truly want we're just looking for the stuff to make us feel like that mm. but nothing can make you feel like that nothing can give that to you um i previously got lost a little bit in the illusion illusion myself i mm. i um uh, thought i would be happy when i'm driving a sports car <laughs> mm -hmm. there was a particular car i had my eye on guess what i bought it why, when I was in the dealership signing the deals, I was very excited. I'm going to be happy now. Got in the car, drove out for 10 seconds. It felt good. And then I realized it was still just me inside this beautiful mm. car. Been there, done that. The, the stuff will not make you happy. The stuff will not give you what you want. But if you have what you want, then you can, you can have the stuff with it too. Well, we've, we've, so it's we've, inside of us we've that just, we really want. We've just uh, spoken about debt and insecurity, right? So do you think there is 
an engineered or organized agenda to keep us all fear-based. You through... scuppered my question. Yes, we always do I this. knew you were going to do that. Do you think there is an organized agenda somehow to keep us fear-based? Uh, you through, mentioned debt. Through debt, through uh, insecurity. Yeah. But it seems like the media keep, keep, keeps you in a constant state of worry. Are we being kept down? And if so, by who and, 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 and why? And why is it? Oh, the uh, Illuminati. Oh. Uh, <laughs> um, you know what? Yes. Possibly. I, I, I do. Yes. Um, I, I, th- I think that there, is, um, there are those who are, um, uh, who are aware of, of, of our unique and individual power that we have to create our reality with our intentions um, to to bring ourselves in alignment with our souls and then and then give our energy and then getting what we want. There are those that are aware of that, and and who for reasons of their own um, wish us not to do this because for as long as we are on the treadmill, for as long as we are engaged with fear, for as long as for as long as we we are playing the game on the game board the way they have set it out according to their rules, mm. we're giving them our energy. Do you want to no. go for you know who or or why? Who or why? Um, the, the the who is not so very simple because because there is this there is this this name there is this thing Illuminati but I don't really like it awfully much because um, because people have attached particular pre 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 configured ideas to what this is yeah and and I don't believe there are a single I don't believe it's one single unified organization. Um, um, it's it's a, a a a very ancient lineage. It's it's um, mm. uh, beings who they themselves I, I understand believe that they have a kind of a sacred duty to watch over humanity. Mm. And and they are almost like the uh, I suppose the shepherds of humanity. I was going to say on, pharaohs, on but yeah, I see what you mean. <laughs> so. so but but they believe that there that there is um, there is a kind of an inherent royal privilege mm. which which is attached to this this onerous task of shepherding humanity. Now, in their own way, they they they've actually done a great job because they've allowed humanity to to progress and grow. Um, but but it's a hierarchical structure, a hierarchical service to self kind of a structure that they are that they have, have been managing for this past eon, for this past age of humanity. Um, and and uh, the way I understand it is is that there are a number of of, of ancient bloodlines, uh, mm. which is which is uh, buys into the the Illuminati story. But this is what I understand to be so. And and they have been running things so that um, so that a certain a certain frame of reality will be held on planet Earth. We that incarnated here aren't here by accident. We came here to experience life as it is: life in separation, life in confusion, life in in not knowing who we are. Now, if you grew up on another planet. It was all just, I don't know, you kick a tree and a master sage falls out spouting wisdom. It's kind of like everybody's just wise and everybody's just connected and we all know the truth. If you grew up there, you wouldn't be calling on yourself to find who you really are. It would be given to you. You'd be told, oh, this is, this is what it's all about. But if you come here to this place, this place of, of deep forgettingness where, where, where all around you, you are, you are invited into games of separation, where you are told that your happiness lies in, in a gold credit card, um, this kind of nonsense. Mm. You, you have to be very clear on who and what you really are uh, if you want to find yourself here, if you want to find what's really important for you, who you really are, what, what, what you're really choosing. Because it's not paid, it's not obvious. Mm. So, so it's an interesting, it's an interesting reality. This planet that we find ourselves on, it's, it's a, it's a very interesting game that we can come and play here. Well, it's, and you it, can choose all kinds of things. You oh, can, you can, you can choose to align yourself with the game. You can choose to align yeah. yourself with yourself, yeah. or indeed, you can find your heart connection and align yourself with your intuition. The, these people, sometimes you say Illuminati, but they, they go by lots of names and there are lots of theories. But, but some people on on Earth will say. Um, if they're doing that, um, what are they going to gain 
through keeping us down. I know it keeps their their system going, their, their, their the uh, financial system. System of control. System of system control. Of power. Is that simply it? Or is, is that as high as they're aiming? It's not anything more interesting than that? It's literally just as obvious as it sounds? Well, again, um, it's... The, the, the answers to these things are not simple because because they are once again it's not as I understand it it's not a, a, a monolithic organization with with clear lines of of mm. of, of, of reporting yeah and, uh, it, not as simple as that it's it's a very complex um, ancient uh, uh, group of families who who who, who have a, a, um, conflict within themselves. Yeah, it, have... it's somewhat modular, and, and there, are, there are there are factions and so on. And the... but I just wonder what they gain. All right. So again, what they gain depends on depends on who 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 within that you're looking at. Mm. Who who are who are, you, who are you asking about? Because obviously there are going to be those within within that whole structure um, who, who who really are just about the wealth and the power and the control. And then there are those, I, I, so I understand, who believe that this is truly a, a sacred duty. They believe that this is that this is um, a role given to them by, let's say, their version of God. It's a it's a it's a sacred duty that they have to watch over humanity for for this stage of its evolution, and and so it depends on who who inside this this. Uh, grouping um, you, you're, you're, you're asking about mm. um, their motivations will be different and, and, and their reasons will be different and what they're getting out of it will be different so it's again it's not a simple thing um, but, but what I understand is, is, is that uh, somewhere way back in our, in our ancient, ancient history when, when humanity was new that there was um, there was a, a um, uh, an, an, an interference with 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 our genetic line, so that we would evolve in a particular direction. And at that level of interference, um, these ancient bloodlines were started. So the, the theory gets quite it gets quite complicated, and 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 also it gets a little bit bizarre because <laughs> because I'm also invoking um, uh, um, ancient ancient astronauts as being the gods. Mm. Um, uh, well, we've heard that before um, quite a lot. Uh, yeah. And in, in fairness, though, Zing Dad, uh, bizarre is probably something that, uh, that that we take as quite common, to be honest. Uh, 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 your bizarre may be quite tame to us. Uh, it, hasn't been, it hasn't been too bizarre because of some of the uh, carvings and mm-hmm. some of the oh, yeah. uh, sculptures that have been made. I mean, they couldn't be described as anything else but ancient astronauts. We've seen them. Yes. Um, We've had guests well, talk the, about the, it. This this is a theory which which is gaining more and more traction and and yeah, a lot of the, uh, the 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 sort of um, the mainstream uh, archaeological and 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 uh, you know the, the the mainstream sort of beliefs about these things are um, are kind of losing credence in the popular in the popular mind. Mm. Um, but but the point is that that I come to understand that 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 this is that this is what happened that our human civilization now this thing that we experience that we say uh, I don't know it started I, I don't know six thousand years ago in some area this is just the latest chapter and that there were previous chapters of civilization many of them on planet Earth and 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 uh, this chapter uh, there there has been a particular um, a, a particular influence on our genetics and a particular drive that 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 we should evolve in a particular way. And in order for that to happen, these families, these bloodlines, were were set as the as the martyrs, as the mm. I don't know, as as the ones who will who will uh, um, shepherd us through this process. And they they are. They are bloodlines, very importantly, because they don't share their genetics with us. If you met one of them, they probably, you know, there are humans, but they don't have the same, for example, genetic abnormality, genetic problems that we have. They don't have the same propensity towards um, um, genetic disorders that we have. Mm. Uh, so I, that, I imagine that would explain why um, 
certain people, uh, royal families, blue bloods, blue, blue bloods as we call them, <laughs> or, or world leaders, certainly, they often live to, to very, very oh, yeah. old age, yes. but royal families particularly. Yeah, look, I mean, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm very loath to point fingers and say oh, go uh, on. that this person, no, because I, I, I simply don't know that this person or that person is a member of this, mm. of these ancient bloodlines, I, because I don't know. Yeah. Um, uh, what I have understood is that the 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 the, the ones the, the true uh, the true puppet masters, the ones who are who are truly running the show, who truly know. Those ones are not in the public eye at all. Yeah, we've often so, said that. So they're hidden. Um, they're really running the show. The ones that we see are the public face. And, for example, oh, uh, politicians and what, they come and they go. That, that's the public face. Now, that's not to say that they, they don't also have certain uh, um, family bloodlines of their own. But I don't think these are the true masters. I don't think these are the ones that are, that are really behind all of this stuff mm. and it's, it's probably not even an area you particularly like to dwell on i should imagine because you you see you, you come across as a very positive person and a, a, a spiritually seeking person and i i've heard you you have touched on reincarnation how did you um mm. or past lives how did you come across that uh thing dad Wow. Yeah. Okay. As, as I guess, as a part of the the same, um, when we started this 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 chat, I was talking about my own uh, inner conflict, my own inner pain, and as a part of that same journey, as a as a part of trying to understand why things were the way the way I experienced them to be, um, why I had um, inside my own psyche uh, certain fears, certain unex inexplicable responses to life. Um, so I started asking these questions and, and, uh, and as a part of that process as well, um, um, I would, I, I, I can't really explain this any other way than memories arrived. Mm. Now, memories that were clearly not from, from this life of mine, but memories nonetheless. And, and the, the more I quested after this again, stretching the muscle, opening myself, allowing this to, to happen, um, the 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 more these memories would arrive and, and eventually um they got to be that 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 i have memories of past lives that are every bit as clear to me as me my memories of my own childhood they're every bit as real these other experiences that i had other places i've been other lives that i've lived that it's still me it's just me expressed in other lives but um as as interesting i suppose as that might be what 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 was really congruent about them is as i followed the story of of another lifetime i came to an understanding of where the deep seated choice or the formulation of a belief was that i was now experiencing the tail end of and so this is something i've i've come to understand to be true that we are um, I mean, and I don't insist that this should be true about anybody else because that's not my game. But but I believe it is so that we are reincarnating beings. We are beings that that experience many lifetimes. But if you hurt yourself psycho spiritually in another lifetime, if you have a traumatic lifetime in which you decide something, you decide and you firmly hold on to something like I cannot trust anybody but myself. I'm the only one that that, that I can rely on. And, and and that decision is made in a in, in a, a, a a very powerful way because your experiences so strongly show you that it's true, that you then hold on to that as a belief about yourself. I can only trust myself. Then you will experience that again, and 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 you'll keep having that experience in in this lifetime. You will keep having this reflected back at you, and you will keep encountering others that are not trustworthy others that are not trustworthy and and for me come to realize where that that um where those deep-seated decisions and beliefs, how how they played out what the drama was in that lifetime where i made that choice seeing it and understanding it and understanding and having compassion for its validity in that lifetime something traumatic happened there so that's what happened there. That's why I came to believe that allows me to release it in this lifetime. 
I don't have to believe that anymore. I can let go of it because it's not true for me always. I, 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 wonder, I, I wonder about the question of trust, though. Um, sh should we really trust any, anybody else? I, I mean, mm. it, does, it, does it make you any less spiritual? I mean, can you really trust anybody else but yourself, really? I suppose if they're working towards a false goal. I, no, well, I often no, I, I hear yeah. this thing coming up, Mark, yeah. about enlightenment and everything else, mm -hmm. and it always seems to be you should be more trusting to everybody. But is should you really be? But if everybody else isn't doing the same as you, aren't you just going to be a mug? Take advantage. Yeah, of it. yeah. So this trust question, I just is something I've been grappling with. Mm. It's it's really a great question, and and. Um, uh, there, are, there are many journeys that you can go on this one, but for me, the, the, the ultimate end of, of the journey, the way I finally resolve it for myself, is that it comes back to uh, what I was saying earlier about what you, what you truly, if you've aligned all of yourself behind, behind a deep-seated knowing about who you really are and why you're really here, and, and if, you are, if you are completely aligned with that, then life will reflect that back to you. Now, this, this seems a little counterintuitive, but but, but mm. I've seen and with everybody that I have, um, I'm I, I find myself helping a lot of people to to people who are willing to see it this way, but are struggling with it. And as people do this, as people find themselves aligned with 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 their own with their own inner truth, with who they really are, with their with their own purpose, so life absolutely begins to reflect that back at them. Life outside of them changes to reflect themselves back at themselves. If they are not, um, um, uh, uh, if, if, they, if their persona is not fragmented by drives and desires and, and intentions which go in many different directions, then, then it's not confusing and becomes very clear that life reflects you back at you. Your relationships around you change Relationships that, that are not congruent with who you truly are fall away. Relationships that are somewhat congruent actually change. Things that you're struggling with with others around you, those situations change. Your experiences change. Everything changes as you align with this. And so the issue of trust becomes just an illusion. It's just a story. It's just nonsense. You, there, is, there is nothing to trust and nothing not to trust. Because if you are following your heart, being true to yourself, aligned with yourself, and life is just reflecting that back at you. If life always just reflects you back at you, which is the, 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 my whole contention, then trust is a, is, is a, is a chimera. It's just a, it's just a story. It's, a not, it's nonsense. So um, trusting others when you don't know who you are and when you don't truly trust yourself, when you don't know that you're creating your reality, well, I suppose that sounds a little bit like asking for trouble because I'm going to open myself to allow others and I'm going to give them carte blanche I'm going to give them the, the keys to the castle but I don't really know what they'll do once they're inside but I don't know does that sound like a good idea to you it doesn't sound like a good idea to me so what we should really do is is come to a decision to trust ourselves trust that we will make the best choices for ourselves that we can possibly make yes and as you come to that decision align with that decision Stay with the choice. Have the, have the emotional and spiritual courage to keep following that, to keep asking, what are the very best choices I can make for myself? And, and stay with it. Keep making the best choices for yourself. Keep finding who you are. Keep aligning yourself with that. And as you do that, be observant. How does life around you change? And if life around you starts to become better, if, if you're becoming more integral, results in those around you becoming more trustworthy, well, it's a no-brainer, isn't it? We're just getting into the last, um, I think, three minutes, uh, Zingdan. I just wanted uh, to, to um, talk about your book, where it's available. Yes, websites. And your websites and what you're doing in the future. Oh, wow, grand. Lovely. Thank you for that <laughs> question. So my book is available on my website, but you can also get it on, on, on like Amazon or Barnes & Noble or wherever. It's called The Ascension Papers. And um, really, the, 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 well, it's the first book there. I'm working on the second one. Um, first book is about, for me, it's, it's that journey. It's, it's turning fear into love. It's about letting go of, of, um, 
of my objections to the fact that all is one and that I'm the creator of my reality. And as I did so, as, as I wrote the book, people that are, are open to this, people that are wanting to understand this stuff um, are letting me know that they have found the book to be truly life-changing for them. It has, it has, it's answered the same questions that came up for them in the same way. So that, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, that's from the book. My, my, my drive, my passion, the thing that I, that I really love to do is to give to others that which I most desire which is um, connection, belonging, uh, an understanding that we are all one, all of that stuff. So, so aside from the book, um, I, I, I also run a, an, an online and in real life an Ascension school, which is really just taking those, those ideas and making them into practical, real experiences so that we can discover them and, and, and know them and feel them. And is, is the physical one based in South Africa or do you tour that? Yeah, no. I, I I really love where I live, so I don't like to move around too much. Mm -hmm. I'm very selfish. So the physical one's just in in the little town d down the road from where I stay. Okay. Um, and and I, I don't take it on tour, no. But the the online one, um, uh, I've, all the material has been made available for people who are anywhere in the world, mm -hmm. and they they engage with the material, and then there's a forum where they can chat with each other, so they can figure it all out. So so there's that. Um, what's, and the, what's, what's the name do, of that site? And your your uh, website's there. I, I, I've been to uh, zingdad.com, and uh, there's a bookoflight.com as well. I'm not sure if that's still current. Yeah, that, that's uh, that that was a forum that I was engaged with, but no, it's it, the, the zingdad.com is, Zingdad. is kind of the mm. for me. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. Um, <clears throat> so, so yeah, it's it's there, and I and I also help people uh, in in one on one healing sessions um, where they are. In their own past life dramas, I also offer that. Ah. Um, and really, where am I going in the future? Well, I, I continue to follow my heart. I, <laughs> I let it lead me. <laughs> follow your intuition. The, I'm just wondering, the Ascension yeah. Papers, your book. What, mm. what, what's the uh, name? What What is that authored under? Is that is that under Zing Dad? Or? Zing Dad. We should be able to find that on Amazon without too many miss hits. There yeah. can't be many <laughs> Zing Dads. <laughs> Well, you see, that's one of the nice things about the name. When I, when I chose it, it is I Googled it, and there, there's no such word, and it doesn't mean anything. So if you, if you type Zingdad into, into – if you browse and you look for mm. Zingdad, you only get me. So that's kind of cool, isn't it? That's quite good. I mean, at least it didn't transpire to be Swahili for an insult to somebody's mother or anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly so. Um, it was it's rather a shame. We could have spoken for another a couple of hours, yes, actually. Yes, I think we'll probably have to get them well, on again. We have to, we, I think we shall, and we have to move on because we have another guest. Yes, um, busy day, busy day. But it's been a real pleasure, actually. Yes, it's been brilliant. It's been and, uh, we'll have to uh, rearrange and get you on again to, to go into this some more. Thank you very much. I, I really enjoyed it as well, and I would love to come back and, and be on your show again. I hope we asked some questions that were somewhat new anyway. We didn't, uh, we didn't obsess with the Pleiadians as, as much as I thought we might. Oh, well, it's, it's always fun. I mean, you know, this is my passion. This is what I love to talk about. So, you know, what, what, whatever. This is, this, is, this is what I love. <laughs> That's brilliant. And, and we've, we've loved talking to you, and thank you ever Lovely. so much. Thanks, Zing Dad. We'll uh, hopefully get you on again. Be safe. Thank you very much. See you. Bye-bye. Wow, that was Zingdad. The Ascension Papers. Yes. Available from all good online bookstores. Yes. And uh, his website as well, zingdad.com. And from zingdad.com, if you've um, enjoyed what Zingdad had to say, and I must say, I, I actually did. Yeah, he, yeah. He follows some of my own philosophies. Really yeah, there. yeah, yeah. It, it is unusual to have somebody with a, a story that's so extraterrestrial in origin that actually sounds a lot more grounded than you would imagine. I'm very surprised. On the surface, it, you it, would think this it, is going to be a little bit it, out there. It wasn't. Titular line. It wasn't what I was, what I was expecting, and it's, it's it's an interest of mine because uh, I've often thought in my life that I've done th I've followed things where I thought was the right thing to do, and mm -hmm. my mind told me, and it, it yeah. was practical. Yeah. But when I follow what I really wanted to do, exactly. I'm happy. Exactly. It's, uh, I'm just. It's just that little thing. I, I, I find. Uh, I find interesting. I don't know what the name of it is. Common sense. <laughs>
so people don't follow their common sense. <laughs> no, they're, it's they're, not that common. They're following their common sense, yeah. I think, is the problem. People think that is the common <laughs> Maybe. sense. You know, to what's going to be practical. It's too hot in here, my brain's fried. Yeah, it is very warm. Let's here. get out of here, shall we? Um, yeah, let, uh, so it's Oh, been, it's everybody contact us. I must give out a, a, a quick shout out, Russell, through some papers live. Say on hello air. to us on Facebook. Yeah, uh, why not? Out there hour, not the out there hour, just out there hour. Yeah. Uh, Facebook, and there's the Alternative Future Radio group where we will be chatting to you or liking your links. A big up, <laughs> a, yes, exactly. Yeah. A big up to uh, Lube. L00B, oh, nice, nice. Uh, who left us the comment on iTunes, which I only just found. Oh, wow. Uh, more and longer, please. And they gave us five stars. So if you're listening to us on iTunes, God please leave them. us a review and we'll read them out. They have no consideration for the rest of the listeners. More, more and more longer. And longer. Oh, my God. I don't know. Don't Ma- we torture them enough? Maybe already. they know us better than we think. <laughs> see, see everybody later. Thanks for your comments on YouTube as well, and we'll get round to those on the next Out There Hour. Oh, we will. AlternativeFutureRadio.com Stalk us on Twitter at OutThereHour Send hate mail to helpdesk at AlternativeFutureRadio.com Insult us at Facebook.com forward slash OutThereHour Troll us on YouTube.com forward slash AFRadioYT Send us questions for upcoming guests, make requests, or just complain. It's all good. Alternative Future Radio, where spooky just got weird. You're listening to Alternative Future Radio, home of the weird, resting place of the paranormal. We'll take you to the furthest reaches of the galaxy and beyond. Strange phenomena, aliens, psychics, cryptozoology, conspiracy, holistic health, and UFOs. Alternative Future Radio, where spooky just got weird. Dad, hello and good morning to both of us for once. Hello, Mark. Lovely to be chatting to you. Thank you for having me on the show. Good morning to you. Are you on the same time zone as us? This is a real novelty for us. It, it's it's strange for me too to be talking to somebody who's vaguely at the same part of the day as I'm. I'm uh, just an hour later than you. Ah. Uh, excellent, excellent. You, you've had an extra hour in bed then, Zingla, the more, more than we've had. <laughs> That's what I did, yes. Quite right. <laughs> yeah, we got up early for your convenience. It's okay, we don't mind. <laughs> Too kind. <laughs> <laughs> so, right, where do we start? Um, let's start with your, your website. I looked at your uh, your website and there's so much information on there, my brain blue screened. Uh, can you <laughs> can you basically start right at the very beginning? Um, because I've listened to other interviews with you and there was a great assumption by some of the interviewers, certainly, that people knew various terms and various mm. things that you were talking about already. And I'd rather start right at the beginning because we, we aim for a, a semi-mainstream audience, not to, uh, not to yeah, you know, we don't pigeonhole we them don't, too much. We don't assume anybody has yeah. any prior knowledge. So we like to start at, at, at the beginning. So wh- where's the best place to start? Oh, gosh. All right. Um, so, so really, um, my, my journey is, 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 is a kind of a spiritual one. It's, um, it's about questing after the answers to, to, to the things that, that bugged me. Um, I found within myself, uh, um, I suppose, as, as many people do, uh, some, some kind of uh, doubts and questions. And why is my life the way it is? Why is the world, you crazy guy, go away, you're mad? Yeah. And instead, what I got was some really good responses. People saying, well, hey, wait a minute, this, this is interesting. I like this. <clears throat> and then I connected with, um, as I was engaging in this pursuit of who am I, what is it all about, I started to scratch out memories that were not mine, past life recollections, snippets of, of, of events that made sense, that, make, that helped me to make sense of my own, my own discomfort, my own confusion, my own pain. Places where I had come to deep-seated decisions, which were still reverberating through my life. And one of these lifetimes, I found a, um, a very caring, grandfatherly kind of figure who had helped me to make sense of a lot of things many lifetimes ago. And so I decided in the same wacky way to reach out and find this being and ask him questions about who is he and, 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 and how can he help me to make sense of, of my stuff. And um, <clears throat> this being 
uh, gave me some very startling information. He's, he, he, uh, uh, he's called Adamu, and uh, he let me know that he was a part of the Pleiadian um, soul complex. Now, all you, of this... You're going to have to explain that one. Well, okay, good. So, so uh, there, out in the Pleiades, apparently, there, there, there's a, like a whole civilization living there. Um, uh, kind of like, like what we are on Earth, except they're way more advanced technologically, and, and they're spacefaring beings, and, they, and, and he claims that they, um, that they have been watching. You're listening to Alternative Future Radio, home of the weird, resting place of the paranormal will take you to the furthest reaches of the galaxy and beyond. Strange phenomena, aliens, psychics, cryptozoology, conspiracy, holistic health, and UFOs. Alternative Future Radio, where spooky just got weird. Good morning once again to the world. From us, the out there hour, bringing glory up unto thee. The Out There Hour on Alternative Future Radio. The Out There Hour with Basil and Mark. www.alternativefutureradio.com Good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon. And welcome to the Middle East. Africa. Trinidad and Tobago. Congo. South Sandwich Islands. Czech Republic. Ooh. I will do later. <laughs> Take my wife, please. I'm here all week. And uh, hello to our friends on Facebook, YouTube, and iTunes. Comment. Send us messages. We'll take whatever you've got, except for spam and hack attacks. <laughs> we don't even want to go there. We'll talk about that on After Hours. We will. It's been serious. Mm. We've had a bit of a week. We're pressed for time. We're going to talk to uh, a gentleman in South Africa. Yes. Uh, named Zingdad. Zingdad, yes. Uh, I must admit the the way it is. Why do things? Um, why do? Th- why do I get angry unreasonably at times? These kind of um, emotional, spiritual, psychological kind of questions. Mm. And so um, I, I, I quested after those, and I wasn't happy with the answers I was finding in in, in religion or in philosophy or or, or the, you know these normal avenues. I just wasn't happy with it. Yeah. And. Um, so I decided that the only place I was going to find eventually, uh, that I was going to find answers that would satisfy me, were within myself. And um, I developed over many, many years a mechanism of, of connecting with, with my own spirit guide. Um, and, and I realized that this sounds like a completely bizarre thing to do. Uh, if you haven't done it yourself, well, maybe I'm just deluding myself. And I'm completely open to the fact that, that this is one grand self-delusion. Mm-hmm. But I connected with an intelligence, with an answer within myself, which was providing me with, with, with answers to the questions that I had. And um, initially, I had profound doubts about this. But I started very tentatively sharing some of the information that I was obtaining in this way online. Um, I joined some online forums. And uh, when you join a forum online, you've got to come up with a snappy, clever pseudonym with something to call yourself. Mm-hmm. Now, I have a little Dashunt who I'm particularly attached to called Zing. So I called myself Zing's dad, Zing dad. And, and <laughs> so it was just, just a silly spur of the moment whim thing to call myself. Um, and I, I started posting the material that I had like that. And I was expecting a whole lot of finger pointing. Oi, you. Your name does conjure up a certain impression. It does, and it's probably the wrong impression. I think so, yeah. I think people are going to be surprised by Zingdad. They're going to be very surprised by a very articulate, very intelligent man. Yeah, he seems to know his beans. And uh, some interesting uh, stuff on philosophies and uh, in- the nature of intuition. Yeah. And what yeah. that might be. Yeah. You didn't expect that from a man called Zingdad, did you? No, you didn't. Yeah, uh, yeah very, very good. Uh, he's an author of the uh, book. The Ascension Papers. Um, under the name Zingdad uh, also. Yeah. Uh, you can check out Zingdad.com and uh, his books on Amazon and Barnes & Noble and all. 
You're going well, to be in for nice quite places. a treat. It's not what you're expecting. Yeah, yeah. I must admit, uh, I I myself heard the name and thought, yeah, this that's going to be weird. Yeah, you think it's going to be a bit loopy and all that yeah. kind of thing. Uh, it it's isn't. actually fairly grounded. Very grounded, indeed. Yeah, but fascinating, too. Yes. Shall we do the thing? Let's do it. Let's do it. Have you always been interested in the esoteric world? Perhaps you'd like to learn more about ufology, lost civilizations, cryptozoology, or even conspiracy theories. We have diploma courses in all these subjects and more. So, if you want to become an expert or just have a great time learning about exopolitics, false flag terrorism, or the paranormal, then the Esoteric Academy is the place for you. EsotericAcademy.com, where ideas and learning meet. Okay, now we're going live over to South Africa to a forest area outside Neisner. I I think I've <laughs> Neisner, got that. I yes. think I've got that right to speak to 